Hey everybody, we got a rare hazelnut sighting here. Uh, welcome back to the driveway engineer. Uh, it's Tuesday, so we're gonna do some gunmetal custom stuff. One of the things that fascinates me that I'm really, really interested in is alternative energies, alternative ways of living your life, things that are sustainable. Um, you know, I, I like to generate my own power. I like to generate my own heat. I like to generate my own fuel. I don't think that liberals have a lock on this market, and I think that this is useful. Um, so I developed this rocket stove, and I want to show you guys real quick. It's for emergencies. This is a small model. It's for emergencies. It weighs less than seven pounds. I just weighed it. Uh, it'll be for sale on the gunmetalcustoms.com website by the time you see this. Um, it's made out of 14 gauge steel. You see that mine's all dirty because I've been burning it. It works great. I already shot this video once. I didn't like the way it turned out, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw this thing together and let you guys see how easy it is. It's not super easy, but let you see how it goes together, how it burns, how it works. It's cold, I don't have gloves. It's like 18 degrees out. Um, but yeah, these are great to have around. They're good for camping. Sometimes you can't always use uh, you know, an open fire camping for various reasons. I think they're good to have for emergencies. Um, you know, we have one in each of our vehicles now. So it's gonna get dirty. You can paint this if you want. I wouldn't recommend it. I, I'm gonna cook on mine. So uh, what I will do is wipe it down with vegetable oil after I clean it. Um, there's two sides. They look like L's, kind of, or boots. I find it a little easier to just do everything. My camera freaked out there. I find it a little easier if I do everything on one side, then put the other side on, and then put the back. Um, so that's how I do it. That's how I'm going to show you guys how to do it. You'll get a stack of plates, and they all look pretty similar. Um, they're not all the same. They're all a little different. There's two of one, and then there's uh, one of another, then three of another. So, these two, there's two here. They're the same size. And they're actually, out of the four that go in this area, these are the biggest. Um, they go on the angle. like so. I just let them flop. Um, then there's a larger one. This one's larger. These should go in. These two should go in so that the close edge is to the front or to the back. Sorry. So see how one edge one foot's right up against it, one's not. Put that to the back. Then this is bigger than this. This one goes down at the bottom, like so. And then the only thing left before you can put the side on is this little top piece. And again, the close edge goes to the back. Um, then you can grab your other side piece and I'm not going to lie, this is not as easy as you would probably like it to be. I'm out here in the cold doing it though, so it can be done. And you got to fiddle around, and it's not super fun. These are not meant to be portable when assembled. They're meant to be portable when knocked down. So like you could go through here and throw tack welds on this if you wanted to, but it would defeat the purpose of it. Um, so once you get it all together, you see I've got it kind of together. Uh, this is the front piece. You slide that on like so. You gotta hold it though. It just kind of sucks. It is what it is. Um, this big piece, it's like a rocket, 
Haha, <laughs> it's a rock and so. See, I got big hands. I can clamp it all together. And I can throw all this on the back. And then I can shove this out of the way. Bam. Then you're only left with this piece. This is a miscut. That's why this one is mine and a prototype and not yours. And there you go. On the top, there'll be there'll be this, and then there'll be another setup that's for a fire grate if you want to do a fire grate. So I made it wide. Yours might weigh a little more than seven pounds if you actually carry all the stuff with you. Um, so this is what it looks like. And then mine's on a trash can. So it's not level, but I'm gonna prop the back of it up here. This is all I used to start it. All right, next day, um, it is eight degrees out. So it's a good day to test. I have a little paper, a little piece of cardboard, some chunks of wood. This is apple wood that I use for my smoker, but you know, no big deal. You can use whatever you want. I'm gonna take that grate off and we'll start a fire in here. And it's really not so much to show you how to start a fire. I hope if you're watching this, you probably know how to start a fire. And more to show you how it works. So you feed it, you know, you know how to start a fire. If you're into rocket stoves, you know how to start a fire. So what happens, I'm gonna show you from the side. This isn't really big enough to be like a true rocket stove, but what happens is the air gets drawn under here and you feed your wood through the top. And in this area, on a true rocket stove, it will be a little longer and the chimney creates a draft and it sucks the air through um, and burns just super, super efficiently. We're not gonna quite get that here. Um, but for an emergency, this will still do what you need it to do. Uh, you know, throw a few sticks. Like, pretty much most places in America, you can find some twigs and grass and sticks. I kind of cheated and used newspaper, but, you know, it's cold. Give me a break. Um, as this gets going, though, it, it'll draw harder and harder and harder. It takes about three to four minutes to really get ripping. Um, so I'll bring you back then, but, uh, all that I'm going to do is just keep it going, keep stirring it up. And, uh, once it's all heated up, it'll really start drawing through. And then we'll go ahead and throw that little pot on here and, uh, melt some snow for water. So bring you guys back. So it's actually been like two minutes, but, uh, can you hear that? That's the air being drawn through and making the flames shoot up. Um, it's good and, good and warm now. I'm warm standing near it. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the grill on. I have, I'll have in the store, when you see this on the website, there'll be a couple different options for the top. Um, but this is what I'm gonna use today. So we'll throw that on there. And then, I'll use my pan.
and you know we're in the ditch in the middle of nowhere and maybe we need a drink so we'll let that go and that's kind of the point of the stove right Sometimes I blow a little bit down here and it kind of stokes the fire. You got to be careful because the flame will shoot back out in your face. So, you know, use caution. So our snow is melting. I picked up a bunch of crap with it, but if you were dying, you wouldn't care. Throw some more snow in there. Right here next to the garbage can. It likes it. It's good for you. Obviously you would do this with more care in an actual survival situation. I just really want to show you guys how it works and what it's good for and why you'd want it. Look how fast it's going now. Like all fires, once you get decent coals and, and get it, get everything heated up, it, it really, she rips. I'm not quite sure if this is boiling. No, it's not boiling. There's just air bubbles in there. I'd say it's probably, I don't know, 80, 90 degree water right now. With a chunk of ice in the middle of it. It's really not taking no time here. We got steam now. All right, I'm gonna head inside and get a hot dog and uh, my phone. And you guys can stay out here and watch the water boil. I'm gonna leave it running. I don't want to time lapse it or cut away because I want you to know the real time.
we're boiling we're boiling water now I don't know how many minutes it's been but uh it's 10 degrees so you can see I'm gonna go ahead and knock this off here and then cook my hot dogs I didn't think to bring a pot holder. I don't think like that. So, I mean, you can see, you can get good warmth off this. And I'm personally fascinated by all the different alternative technologies there are out there that are kind of forgotten and passed by because maybe they're not as convenient, like rocket mass heaters or rocket stoves. I'll be doing a rocket mass heater in my shop and I'll be offering those for sale to people. Those are a solution that can heat your home. Uh, this is more for emergencies. This would probably heat like an ice shanty or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think it's really neat. Um, I, we have them in both our vehicles now. I'm happy to bring them to you guys. I think that they're useful. I could heat in there with it. Uh, there's not a lot of smoke. Like once it's going, you know, I'm not going to tell you to burn it without a chimney, but I'm just saying they're neat. And for emergencies or camping or whatever, especially camping in places where, you know, maybe fire's prohibited or, you know, during fire season, uh, pretty neat. I camp rustically. I know a lot of people do like the KOH and the barbecue, gas grills and everything else. Um, that's not really how I roll, you know, but you know, if you had a rabbit or something, end of the world, let him go. I mean, this will, uh, keep you fed, keep you clean water, keep you warm, probably keep you alive. I think you gotta get the point that it puts out very, very usable heat. Um, so I'm gonna wrap, well, I'm not gonna wrap the video up. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like knocked flat. Uh, and then I'm gonna let you go. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Reach out to the website, reach out down below. And uh, we'll see you next time.